In the first five videos in this series, I explained how topographic maps show hikers the terrain they're passing through and how to estimate elevation changes, horizontal distances, and slopes. In other words, the previous videos were all about topography. In this video, I'll discuss two other aspects of the natural world. I'll begin with plant cover. Topo maps can have multiple symbols to indicate the local veggies, but here I'll focus on forest, shrubland, and grassland. One easy definition of forest is trees that are tall enough and continuous enough to form a canopy over your head, like you see here. The valley at the center of this map is Calaveras Canyon. The green indicates forest, while the white indicates grassland or some other kind of treeless area. You can see that most of this area is forested, but there are open areas in the valley bottoms. If you're standing in Calaveras Canyon, you'll see conifer forests on the slopes and alpine meadows below. On this map of the Manzano Mountains, there's a north-south ridge that includes Bosque Peak. The east flank of the ridge is solid green, indicating forest. This is what part of that forest looks like. On much of the ridge, the green is printed in little dots known as stippling. The map is telling you that in those areas, you're not in true forest, but in shrubland. In the southwest, such areas are usually called woodland rather than shrubland. Regardless of the name, we're talking about areas where the trees aren't tall and dense enough to form an overhead canopy. The stippling isn't highly obvious in the previous map segment, so I'll zoom in, even though that makes the image blurry. The flatter area west of the stippling is white, so that area lacks trees. You might have an isolated tree here and there, but that's it. In the real world, the white area on the map looks like this. It's mostly grass or bare soil, but you can see a few low bushes in the middle distance. The hills farther back are the Manzano Mountains. Once you move into the foothills, you're out of the grassland. The patch of solid green marked by the arrow tells you that there are tall trees in the canyon southwest of Bosque Peak. But most of the foothills terrain is stippled green, so it's shrubland. And this is what the foothills shrubland looks like. The trees are mostly low junipers, mostly 6 to 10 feet tall, with enough space between them that you can find a way through. Here's what the stippled area looks like on top of the Manzanos. If not for the existing path, you'd have to cut your way through. In this picture, the shrubs are mostly oak. Out west, the name for dense thickets like this is chaparral. You've seen this map segment in earlier videos in the series, but this time let's analyze it in terms of veggies. Apparently, Williams Lake is in a meadow, but is mostly surrounded by forest. Also, the mountain peaks aren't covered with forest, so as a guess, they're above tree line. Here's Williams Lake and its meadow, with trees nearby. You can also see how the local peaks extend above the trees. Now it's time to talk about water. Here in the southwest, where water is so scarce, map symbols for water are more important than the symbols for plant cover. In this video, I'll focus on five topographic symbols for water. Lakes and ponds are easy to spot. They're light blue blobs with dark blue outlines. In general, blue on topo maps means water. Here are the other four water symbols I want to talk about. I'll go over them one by one. For my map example, I'll use a section of the Rio de las Vacas in the Jemez Mountains. By this point in the video series, I hope you can see a main valley with a stream that flows southward, as well as three side valleys, two flowing in from the east and one flowing in from the west. Let's build on that by looking at the water symbols. You may need to go full screen on a computer to see them properly. The first of these blue symbols represents a stream, which seems pretty obvious, but it specifically means a perennial stream. Based on the topo map, the main stream, the Rio de las Vacas, is perennial, as is School Section Canyon. However, in the southwest I've hiked to many streams marked by continuous blue lines and found no water at all. In practice, perennial doesn't mean permanent, it just means that when you're looking for water, those streams are your best bet for actually finding some. In desert areas, best bet translates as, quote, take lots of water, unquote. This symbol, a blue line interrupted here and there by three dots marks intermittent streams. In my experience, at least 99% of the time, the stream bed is bone dry. 
Based on the topo map, Turkey Creek and Telephone Canyon can't be relied on as water sources. On the other hand, if you need to cross them, you're not likely to get your feet wet. This symbol, a little circle with a squiggly tail, represents a spring and the water trickling from it. In my experience, most springs shown on topo maps are there when you arrive, but springs can be seasonal and the perennial springs can dry up during droughts. Sometimes springs dry up and don't come back. Finally, many springs in cattle country are trampled by cows, so you might have trouble getting drinkable water out of those spots. Based on the map, this area includes two springs, one in Turkey Canyon and one in School Section Canyon. But consider this map segment. It shows two springs near El Cajete, a shallow enclosed basin and meadow in the Jemez Mountains. Both of those springs dried up years ago. I know because I went looking for them. This symbol is for wetlands, which can be anything from a meadow that's muddy part of the year to water over your head. I think it's supposed to symbolize reeds sticking out of water, but who knows. The main thing is, you want to avoid wetlands because you can get all muddy and lose a boot, but also because wetlands are easily damaged by human activity. The critters who depend on wetlands thank you in advance for walking around them. Looks like there's a patch of wetlands in this area in School Section Canyon. Before leaving this topic, I'll remind you to never drink untreated water in the southwest, even if it's spring water. I had Giardia once, and it's an experience you don't want to share. A filter such as this one weighs almost nothing, it's easy to use, and it'll keep your gut in proper working order. There are many other symbols that represent other kinds of vegetation and water, but now you know the basic ones. Combine that information with the topographic details on your map, and you'll have a good sense of the natural world you're about to enter. Of course, the planet's surface also includes cultural features such as houses and roads, and I'll cover some of those in the next video.